Yo, what's up? It's Terry B. We're going to do something different. We had an audio issue while riding this mountain bike trail in Sedona, Hangover Trail. So I'm going to do a little voiceover while you watch me struggle. Enjoy. Like I said, this is Sedona, Arizona. This is Hangover Trail. And a little bit about Hangover, it's a uh, double black or <clears throat> if you're looking at trail forks, it's a red trail. There are only three real trails in Sedona that are red or double blacks like this. And uh, <clears throat> with the exception of the white line, which isn't really a trail, it's just a crazy line with a cliff. So we've never ridden Hangover before. This is our first time and I am riding with Amir and I am riding with Andre. They are behind me <clears throat> and the start of this seemed pretty easy. There were some hikers like these guys here. And uh, I was really um, taking it easy for the majority of the trail because I knew I hadn't seen videos of people riding this. Uh, and it looked really crazy. Um, and I will say this is one of the first, tr first times I rode a trail where I felt I was out of my league <laughs> like this pushed me Sedona as a whole all the trails really pushed me and made me a better rider but hangover is one that I've never I just there's nothing like it and you're riding on the sides of cliffs and you're riding on up and over rocks and doing things um, doing things that I had never thought were possible on a mountain bike like even this turn right here Obviously the GoPro's ruining how steep it is. Like doing that left turn, I was really surprised. Like they're f that's a mirror filming me do it because it was such a kind of a hairpin uphill turn to the left. And if any of you are watching this who have ridden Hangover or live in Sedona, I'm sure you're laughing at me, but this is this is really uh this was a real challenge for me this whole this whole trail. So <clears throat> Um, and I appreciate that about it. Um, and when you get to the top of the climb, this is the top here, pretty much the top. There's still some zigzagging we're about to do, but this little area here, you're greeted with a beautiful view of all of Sedona area. I'm not super familiar with, uh, all the uh, rock formations and everything, but, um, I know that to my right and behind me is where, um, High Line and High in the Hog, all the other trails that we were riding in the previous videos. So this little area here, there's a rock slab that goes down into this little valley and that's actually a line. You can actually ride down it and there's little rock markers, but I decided not to go that way. And I went this way, which was the longer way around the side. And I had trouble right there on that. There's a left-hand switchback that goes in. And again, this stuff is a lot steeper than it looks on video. It's a trip. Uh, I have so much respect for anyone who rides this. I've seen videos of people riding this. Um, obviously a ton of Nate Hills videos. I think he did a ride here at nighttime. He did do a ride here at nighttime with somebody. Those dudes uh, are on another level of mountain biking. So I'm not, <clears throat> you know, anywhere near uh, those guys skill level. Um, so riding this stuff for the first time with no one to lead me through it i was only going off video stuff so i do remember that little that cool little like uh rock hangover with uh with the tree it was pretty cool uh, most of this stuff is super exposed so this was uh other than highline this was some of the first time i was riding on stuff that were really exposed like this and uh i was like i said earlier i was really taking my time because it it really put me in my place, honestly. There were, and it wasn't just on the downhills. There were, like this section, I was tired already. And even some of the little bumps and rocks were throwing me. I, I just felt like I was off the whole time because I was just so nervous, I guess, um, riding this part. So this, this all wraps around to... Uh, <clears throat> to a, a rock slab downhill that leads you to the bottom of the trail that's way gets really technical but this whole section here is um 
Uh, it's unique. You're riding on the side of a cliff and there's like a rock hangover and it's kind of like half a tunnel. Um, and a lot of these times, uh, there were three of us riding. So, you know, after I would get through a certain technical area or a challenge for myself, or if I get popped off my bike, I would like wait, uh, for the other two guys to come up, you know, and see how they're doing and if they rode it or they walked it or whatever. So that was really cool to, uh, good time to catch my breath. <laughs> and, uh, this is a hard right that looks like nothing, but that turn was, uh, pretty slick and steep. And this section over here is where it starts to get real steep. And I actually took a tumble. I went over the bars right here. Let's see. It's coming up over here where you're greeted with this beautiful view. So what happened was my tire was at an angle. It was a little off camber as I was going down and I should have pointed my tire more to the left and it washed out on me right here. <laughs> and I fell in the worst way you can fall on both wrists. Not a good idea to fall like that, but it caught me off guard. This little rock slab section was, uh, you can kind of see how steep it is from there. Look at that. It's crazy. It's uh, never ridden anything. I've, I've ridden slabs before, but nothing like that, where you're rolling in on these things for what seems forever. And uh, you really got to have control of your bike. It's really easy to catch too much speed and uh, ride out of control. So this little area was really chill. I left it in the uh, video because this is just amazing. It's like a really cool, I, ex I thought of it as like you're riding on a, like a cement skate park, basically. It's just like a red cement skate park and you can see the little white dots on the ground. And those white dots are little trail indicators just to let you know you're still on the trail because without those, it's really hard to tell where you're going and which lines you should take. <clears throat> so they were really uh, helpful. <laughs> For me, um, if I was to do this ride again, I, I, I do want to do this ride again. Uh, I, I would like to ride with someone who has experience riding it already and knows maybe some better line choices um, because they're not all, uh, I don't know, you come around a corner and, and it's not all about the technical downhill. There might be a really punchy rock climb around a corner that just throws you off or like a root on the side of an edge and then a downhill with a sharp, uh, you know, left turn all of a sudden. And you just, you know, it's better to know where to be on the trail before that stuff happens. So, uh, following someone through a lot of this really helps. Um, by this time I was already, I wouldn't say I was defeated, but I was, uh, humbled. <laughs> Uh, like I said, this trail really put me in my place. It pushed me uh, out of my comfort zone, but it was, I felt it was, we, all of us as a group, sp I'm speaking for the other two as well. I think this trail was just a little bit more of a challenge than we were expecting when we first wrote it, which, which is good. I'm happy that it was actually because um, not saying that we are all super talented mountain bikers by no means, but, um, when we rode Highline, uh, a few days before this, uh, you know, we were told we have to ride it and everything on, ha on Highline was manageable when there were things on this trail that I was just like, what in the hell? And they're both rated the same. So that's why we thought, oh, maybe it'll be similar to Highline. Um, we also rode high on the hog, which was right before or right after this. And we also, uh, realized that high on the hog wasn't as crazy as it was rated, but there were some, a couple tricky features there as well. So trail ratings vary everywhere, I guess, being the moral of the story. Um, the one thing that I learned the most or gained the most experience, uh, riding here in Sedona was. Not as much of the downhill, but it was more of the climbing up hills. Um, Sedona doesn't have a lot of like long downhills for you to go down. This is probably the longest section here on Hangover, which is, you know, it's the, the most mellow and flowy 
uh, most of the trails I found in Sedona to be a lot of like down and then punchy ups and then downs and punchy ups. There was descents for sure, but most of the trail was up and down, up and down, super technical. And the thing that I learned most about riding a bike in Sedona is I learned to keep my suspension unlocked. Uh, it just gave me way more traction. And I also learned to just really use the bo my body weight for momentum to get up and over things and keep those pedals turning to get up and over crazy climbs that when I first got there, I was like, how are people riding like this? But by the time I left, I just felt uh, I have improved by so much. And I was, like I said, I was still walking a lot here at Hangover and felt way out of my comfort zone, but I still feel like I learned a whole lot from riding there. So this is the end of the trail here. This is not Hangover. This is another trail that takes us to our car. We rented a minivan here and there is Amir and Andre. So thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace. So we bring to a close the story of rigid control through the unceasing research and the highest quality.